I think if you go back as far as the early 90s when we started off, we firmly believed that there was a huge wind potential. Most of us that were involved had looked at how the industry had developed in France, in Germany, in Denmark. And we could see that they were building projects with far, far inferior resource than we had in Ireland. An expression that was used at the time was the equivalent of Saudi Arabia in the sky. At that time, no one knew how far we could go. There have been a few challenges on the way in terms of planning and grid. Only a week after I joined, there was a grid moratorium and, and there was no more grid connections for wind farms for a number of years. And then, you know, the industry worked through it and we got the grid processing and group processing regime that we have today. Where we saw the limit was technical. And in the early 90s, the ESB carried out a study on what the system could take and they proposed the optimum level would be 10%, which at the time was probably somewhere between 2 and 300 megawatts. Well, the industry has, has grown from a very small start and it's attracted a novel of talent across many disciplines, environmental, planning, electrical. It has collectively got a very strong pool of very talented, positive, can-do people. The refit scheme is, is the foundation on which we built, we built the industry. And it's hard to believe now, looking back, that it was, it was probably 2004 that that was originally designed. First projects in Refit 1 were delivered around 2007. It has really remained very stable and, and predictable for that whole period of time, and that really allowed uh, both developers and investors a lot of certainty. The public, the politicians, the policy makers, and obviously the energy industry as a whole, they need to buy into the vision of 100% renewables, and they also need to be committed to that vision. Building a wind farm in Donegal, we've discovered that a lot of people have been emigrants and they've come back whenever there's been construction opportunities. They're now staying and finding other jobs. So there's a very positive social connection. So at 169 megawatts, the project makes a really significant contribution to Ireland's renewable energy targets and the wider decarbonisation agenda. And the project itself will power in around 90,000 homes and also in its first year of operation is forecast to avoid 190,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions. There's no reason we can't be as successful as we were to getting to this point, but one of the challenges must be social acceptance. So community engagement's been a real focus for SSE and Quilch to write this project. We've taken really a three-pronged approach to engage early, to communicate often, and really to communicate the benefits of the project. SSE and Quilch are delighted to be developing a number of recreational trails at the site. During the construction process, Goa Wind Park has spent over 20 million euro with local suppliers, really our, our local partners in delivering the project. And at the height of construction, we saw that 63% of the civil contractors and 43% of the grid contractors live local to the project. System operators are coming from around the world to visit Airgrid and talk to the IWEA and talk to the system operator just to see uh, how, how you can run a power system with 60-70% of wind and it looks, it looks like Ireland will lead the way really in terms of just, just how many megawatts of wind we can put on a power system. Energy have 1,000 megawatts or 1 gigawatt of wind farm under contract. 300 megawatts of that is owned capacity that we have built ourselves and 700 megawatts are with independent developers. I think the idea of having 3,000 megawatts installed it probably featured somewhere in all of our own imaginations, but we knew that a lot of changes would need to be made. Mina Dream Extension is 95 megawatt wind farm in Donegal. We opened it in June 2017. The wind farm cost 145 million. As such a large wind farm, it will be a major contributor to the local authority rates. And in addition to that, the wind farm has a community benefit scheme and that scheme is going to benefit all sorts of projects in the local area over a 25 year period. Post 2020 we need to look at structures that we need to put in place to ensure that we get to 100% renewables. There is absolutely no reason why Ireland cannot get to that goal. The single biggest increase in, in energy is coming from renewables. We will start to electrify things like our heating systems, we'll start using more heat pumps, more storage heaters, and we will probably electrify our transport as well. We have the resource, we have the capabilities, but there are challenges to be faced in terms of the transition from where we are today to that sort of level of renewables. Do I believe 100% renewables is a reality? Absolutely. Technically, there's no question that it's achievable. 
um, I think innovation and complementary technologies will assist getting us to that stage. We have made a significant contribution towards the 3,000 megawatts to date in Ireland and we, we hope to make a continuing contribution going forward. Onshore wind has been a, an undisputed success, but really, frankly, we were the only and the main renewable technology for the last decade. For the next decade, it's definitely going to be much more diverse, but we believe onshore wind will remain a, a key pillar for, uh, for the next decade.